Okay. Looks like we're ready. Got the flowers, incense, candles, tissues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. clears throat> so today we're uh, going to um, designate it today as a day to uh, do a formal farewell for Beth, and uh, uh, so that uh, <clears throat> it's a uh, um, Beth has been here for six years, so that. Uh, um, having been here and uh, um, served the community, become a part of the community. And uh, as these things go, uh, it's impermanent. Uh, so that uh, uh, there's, uh, there's that uh, uh, coming together and, and then separation. So these are ordinary aspects of, of uh, human existence, but it doesn't mean we don't have any feelings about it. So that, uh, uh, and particularly uh, Beth uh, uh, wasn't looking to leave, <clears throat> but uh, the realities of, of uh, uh, having uh, uh, health care and uh, all of that are are uh, are part of the uh, part of the decision. Also, I think having a having a grandchild didn't didn't uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think it was a a huge bias for staying forever either. <laughs> so that uh, um, the uh, but what we'd like to do as a uh, Sangha is to um, do the formal um, uh, paritas, uh, blessing chants, protection chants, and uh, uh, giving Beth the the uh, you know the blessings of the triple gem and all the the good wishes of the community uh, behind that. And uh, you know while we are chanting. <coughs> For uh, yeah, for everyone to yeah, bringing Beth to mind and and uh, uh, wishing her well uh, in her on her journeys, travels, and uh, that she lands comfortably. Um, so maybe uh, uh, um, maybe I just sort of let people know now while them. While we're chanting, we'll be, uh, we have a couple things on the shrine which are uh, for, uh, for Beth. One is a, uh, a Buddha image. I could have got a bigger one. <laughs> but I thought, but I, I thought, well, what's the... <clears throat> she's already got, she doesn't have enough space as it is in her, in her bag, so I may as well have a, have a little one. And I was... Uh, offered this very beautiful Swarovski, Swarovski crystal Buddha, and uh, that, that's a, a good reminder of the Sangha. And, uh, and it is sitting on a cloth that uh, um, <coughs> was used to uh, wrap the Buddha uh, in Bodh Gaya. And uh, I, I don't know if they do that every day. They change those out. There's like people lined up all around the world trying to get their cloth around the Buddha. So, um, <clears throat> so this is one of these cloths that have been uh, as a part of the shrine and around the Buddha in in Bodh Gaya, around the the what Buddha Meta, and uh, so that uh, uh, to uh, uh, offer that uh, to uh, to uh, take back uh, uh, to uh, New Zealand as a part of your shrine, a reminder of our community. And, uh, and then uh, 
once we um, then we'll offer that to Beth, and then there's there's a there's a, some um, blessing cords <coughs> that are on the shrine as well, <coughs> and what uh, after we've done the chanting, we've done or offered the Buddha, then uh, the, from the sangha, then they the uh, ask the uh, lay community uh, to. Uh, use uh, the the uh, blessing cords, and then to tie uh, uh, Beth's wrists with uh, with that. That's a very typical northeastern tradition. And uh, uh, if somebody is leaving, sometimes when they're coming back, it's sort of they've been away for a long time, and uh, all the family and friends and Everybody gets together, and it's a it's a it's a way to, uh, you know, t- say materially, uh, uh, have a wish of these 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 blessings and protection, and particularly as a, as a leaving and leaving with everybody's everybody's good wishes, and you'll be wrapped with these cords. You don't have to wear them to New Zealand. You know? <laughs> You can imagine going through customs with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it is a <clears throat> yeah, very uh, very much a part of, of northeastern culture and, and uh, <clears throat> so that uh, uh, it it's a uh, uh, I think it's quite quite meaningful to you know, to actually physically do something, tying on a blessing uh, cord to you know, to you know, physically manifest that that uh, those good wishes. So, if you'd like to come forward and offer the <coughs> trays, yeah. there we go. <coughs> And then we will uh, uh, do the chanting. And as I mentioned uh, during the chanting, just to let everybody's hearts settle and uh, focus all your good energies on Beth. Jankrun Dhammu, could you call the devas? Uh,
Yeah. 
Gifts. Gifts are the next thing on the uh, itinerary. So if you come forward and uh, receive that, let's say, uh, so on behalf of the Sangha, is to uh, offer a Buddha image and the cloth uh, as a recollection of, of uh, your time here to buy Geary, I'd say uh, um, it's hard to encapsulate uh, what uh, what it uh, uh, is, I mean, because you became a part of the community, and uh, and both in terms of um, being of service and helping the community, but uh, but yeah, being a part of the community. So that that is uh, uh, something that is is really to be uh, delighted in and to uh, take uh, take back with you. I'm sure you have many good memories, probably some lousy ones as well. But <laughs> you can forget those ones. <laughs> but <laughs> but the <laughs> that uh, sense of of oh yeah, it was a uh, important part. Of your life, and uh, and you are an important part of our community, as is evidenced by all the people coming to send you off, and all sorts of other people who weren't able to make it or sending their sending their good wishes on this day. So to be able to take that and uh, and uh, yeah, have it as a as a physical reminder. These are shrines are really helpful for uh, setting. Intention setting, bring your recollections to the mind, and uh, and then once this uh, day is over, the uh, the ceremony is over. I'll t- I'll take that back. Is <laughs> 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 what. <laughs> What I want to do is for the rest of the time that you, I mean, because you're, you're going to be coming and going, that we have it on our shrine the whole time and just sort of having it soak up, soak up the uh, the goodness here. And you can, no, you can keep it for now. But... <laughs> <laughs> not, not right, right now. <laughs> Later today. <laughs> And then uh, maybe have Debbie come forward, and uh, and uh, if you take your seat, because there's also uh, yeah, there's yeah, so that there's there's something that uh, so yo and the whole community want to. Uh, So um, we tried to think of something that would be meaningful to Beth. um, And she has a suitcase. (laughs) 
And so it had to be something that would transport, but yet be something to remember her time here and all of us. And Hisayo came up with the idea actually to um, <clears throat> do a piece of art that could travel in a roll and then hang on a wall when the time is right. And part of that be is what is the card that everybody's signing out there that will be on the back of that. So if you haven't signed the, the card out there, please, please do. And um, Beth will recognize the style of art. It's a specialty that Hisayo does. And um, Hisayo, go ahead and unveil it. You'll have to go take a look at it closely. It's done with small pieces of, is it colored paper, Hisayo? Yeah. So. <laughs> is it particularly Japanese? Is it a Japanese style? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the uh, people can take the uh, opportunity to come up and... If you come up and it's uh, after one of these signs has been used up, you can just pull a pin and just untie it for the next scan. Mm -hmm. And it's also an opportunity of expression for Beth if there's anything you'd like to, to say as, you tie, as we tie it on. <laughs> so it feels like you're leaving too soon. Mm -hmm. There's many thanks, and of course, many memories going right back to New Zealand. So thank you very much for all that you've given me. Your inspiration, your support, practical, you know, from way back. So thank you. Thank you. It's your fault I made it here. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one to blame. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Yadiko. Yadiko, um, when I was on my way to Canada. Um, because I was going to Canada, I wrote to him being Canadian. And um, he said, why don't you on your way, why don't you drop in and visit Abayagiri? And, um, I came for five weeks in 2011 in November. So without that, I may not have been wow, here. Wow, so such I, a, I such feel such incredibly a, grateful. Such a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very distinct moment between us. Yeah.
you were here when I arrived. I <laughs> arrived <laughs> with myself and Suhacho, and ever since then, it's been really wonderful spending time with you here and yeah. serving the women retreats and, and um, being around and helping out at the same time. So I, it's just more than words can actually say. I wish you the best. Thank you. Everything that goes for from here. Thank you. What was his name? Oh, Evan. Evan. <laughs> I remember the first night I arrived, it was you and Evan and John Michael. <laughs> and one other guy, I can't remember. Yeah, sitting in the Dhamma Hall. Michael Lee. Hmm? Michael
I think people missed the point of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you want to use it? <laughs> for your service to the community Thanks. and for being you and for being a good friend. Thanks, Mike. You're the first person I met coming to by Gary and I was really, really scared of you. And um, I just got to know you over these past couple months in a completely different way. You were there for me, you know, around my mom and my dad and a lot of stuff. And, you know, right before you, you left to go to New Zealand, I was like, I hate myself and hating everybody around me. And you told me I had a good heart. You kind of saved my butt. And, was, and you saved my butt again recently, too. So you know, hopefully I can repay you someday. Speak first, hug first, or tidy first, whatever you like. Right. So, I would like to thank you very much for all the services that you have done for the monastery. And I especially appreciate the fact that when you are at Casa Serena, sometimes you get irritated.
Jesus, it's not going to get cut. And thank you for your generosity and for helping to keep us all in line. <laughs> and I say good luck, Chukdi. Chukdi? Chukdi. <laughs> Something like that. One poor knows. We have chooks in New Zealand. Oh. Does that count? Yeah, sure. Chooks of chickens. Good luck with the chickens. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Have a nice trip back. Thanks for your help with the, you. with the retreat as well. Yeah. Hope you make it back again. One knee at a time. That's <laughs> right. Turn it off. Okay. Face this way. Face this way. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so boy. <laughs> should go through this sometime. It's kind of an amazing experience. Um, thank you very much for coming. I, I woke early in uh, the morning and it was pouring with rain and I was like, no one's going to come if it's like this. So um, I said, do you think you could just you know, stop for a little while and so there's a safe road for people to travel on? And it's, it's just very, it's very touching to have all of you and the Sangha present here for this. Um, as I said, I, I came for a five-week visit in um, November 2011. Uh, but the interesting thing was when I was planning my trip, I was sitting in the office, I'd been managing a retreat center, and um, I needed to figure out, okay, I'm flying to San Francisco and then San Francisco to Canada. What was the date that I would make that flight on? And there was a part of me that uh, said, you're not going to want to leave. And I had never even arrived. So there was something about um, my, me and this place. And um, I'm just enormously grateful to, um, to Lumpur and, and the elders here at this time and Debbie who... Um, um, just opened the way up for me to stay and I know it's, uh, I feel it's been an enormous uh, honour and a privilege uh, to be with this community for six years. And um, it's like nothing I think I'll ever experience again because when you, uh, you just stay here, many people come uh, and over six years, I don't know what it's like for Debbie because it's 20, over 20 years, but so many people come and um, people, you know, with a, with a big heart and a, a lot of aspiration for good and um, enormous generosity. Um, when, I, when I think about, uh, when I do an orientation, I, you know, I say, especially to people who maybe haven't been in a monastery before, that um, Abai Giri only exists because of people's enormous generosity and goodness. Um, and then that exists because of this incredible example of, that the Sangha um, provide for living a life of, um, of virtue and uh, with a very, very high aspiration, uh, you know, to reach the complete end of suffering. Uh, and it's not, it, 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 everything looks fabulous, but I know that this is a very challenging life. So to be able to have been in a position of service both to the Sangha and the lay community has been um, very, very rich. Um, I, I hope I've learned a lot. I think that they say when you walk out the gate, when you leave, you, you, you know, that's the time when you figure out if you've <laughs> what you've learned and what you can put into practice. Um, I've, I've needed to do some writing uh, for something that's happening later in the month and um, the paper I've been working on uh, and I've just been doing intensively for the last two or three days is on uh, ritual and recollection, recollection uh, devotional practices. And for anyone that writes, uh, and a lot of people I know had to at some time in their, in their past lives anyway, uh, university and school, it's kind of like you gather a research paper. So you gather all kinds of little bits and pieces and you know, you're kind of looking, looking for things that strike and kind of touch the heart and seem to be um, relevant. And, um, and then at some stage, hopefully, it all comes together. It's, it's kind of like these little you know, bits and pieces, a bit like a scrapbook in a way. But it kind of came together for me when, um, you know, because these words like prayer and devotion and ritual, they're often uh, a little loaded for some people. Uh, but it came together with me for um, a piece that I read from the Eastern, uh, the early Christian mystics. And um, somewhere, I guess, because I don't know the Christian uh, teachings all that well, although I was uh, in the Anglican Church confirmed as a, as a teenager, but someone said that um, there's this um, recommendation to pray without ceasing. And one of the early Christian mystics said that that's basically when you enjoin every activity and thought to uh, virtue and goodness. And so for me, it feels like um, as I go out, because I'm constantly thinking, how can I take the temple in my heart? How can I take the teachings in my heart? It feels like a life 
the life as path, the life as prayer, the life as vow, the life as bow, <laughs> um, that it's everything, it's every moment all the time, uh, as long as uh, one is remembering um, that there is a liberation that's possible and that every, every moment can be a piece on the way to that liberation. And um, I've had extraordinary role models um, with me. <laughs> and um, I, remember, I remember saying once to Lumpur, who was not taking his forest practice, so we have these opportunities two weeks at a time, from time to time, to not come to the morning and evening pujas, but he would continually do it. And um, it sometimes looked like he needed rest. Um, so I boldly <laughs> said, Lumpur, I'm just curious. Um, you don't seem to be, uh, even though it's available to you to take a bit of a rest, you just seem to be uh, so often present here for everybody. Uh, how come? And he said uh, that we're continually making choices and that our choices can be based on what is for the benefit of oneself and the benefit of others. And um, Lumpur Pasano himself has been an extraordinary um, example uh, of, of so much for me, whether he's speaking or not, um, just being in his presence and seeing how he is constantly over and over and over giving. Uh, and it's just a rock of kindness and wisdom and um, generosity and virtue and so many things. And, uh, you know, as the Sangha, they are... Uh, He's just been doing it a lot longer than some others, so <laughs> he's gotten it down. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, but everybody here comes because there's something about Abhayagiri that is um, full of goodness and, and, um, and hope and um, generosity and kindness and, and all those things that, you know, make the world a much better place. So everyone here. And many, many people who, who aren't here but come over and over and over, whether it's you know on a weekly, a yearly, whatever basis, it's just um, these rippling out um, circles that make a Bayagiri and the wider community um, just a, a, an extremely wonderful um, community and um, environment to be within. So thank you. Thank you all. So we could uh, close with a uh, sharing of blessings. It's an appropriate way to end the day after uh, coming. Also, uh, say when we close and uh, Sangha disperses, um, yeah, please take the time to schmooze. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's tea available. Just uh, um, um, help your uh, help yourselves. <laughs>